Hello again. I'm sure that it will come as no surprise to viewers to learn that the police are now searching on social media for people whom they can arrest in connection with the rioting over the last week or so. They've actually started arresting people. They've been encouraged to do so by Keir Starmer and other members of his government because it's been claimed that social media posts bear responsibility for the violence. This is absurd, and to understand why, we need only consider that the laws relating to what one can and cannot say are no different online than they are in the street. This is not a complicated idea to grasp. It has for centuries been illegal in this country to encourage people to commit crime. If I go out into the street and try to get together a mob and tell them to burn down a mosque or to attack and injure members of some group, that is, of course, against the law, and quite rightly. If I were to post a video here on YouTube doing the same thing, urging people to behave violently or to harm property or injure others, that would also be every bit as illegal, quite right too. Saying something illegal like that online is just as culpable as if I said it in the marketplace. This is all easy to understand, and I'm glad that this is how the law stands. However, it would be a bit mad if the law were to be applied more strictly to things said online, and treated as being worse than stuff said in a public place out of doors. Yet this is precisely what is happening, and it signals a crackdown specifically aimed at people using the internet. In the description to this video, I give a link to the BBC website about two people arrested in connection with a conversation on Snapchat. Let me read out what it says. Two people have been arrested in Chester following a Snapchat post that allegedly encouraged people to attend a protest at a hotel. Cheshire police say the post contained misleading information stating that the hotel was home to a number of asylum seekers. It adds that no disorder occurred as a result. Two people, a 32-year-old man and a 32-year-old woman from Chester, were arrested on Monday on suspicion of racially aggravated harassment with intent to cause fear and violence. Now remember what we said earlier, that things said online are subject to the same laws as what we say in the street. Let's suppose I'm in the street and I say to some people there that a protest meeting is due to be held outside a local hotel where I believe asylum seekers are staying. Let's suppose that I'm mistaken about the fact that asylum seekers are staying in the hotel. Does anybody seriously think that I've committed a crime by speaking in this way? Because what I've said contained misleading information. I'm not encouraging violence, not urging harm to anybody or inciting criminal damage. I'm simply saying that a protest is scheduled outside the building. Is that really a criminal action? Or would it be a criminal action if I were to be saying it outside? Most normal people would agree that I haven't broken the law and it is not in the same category as trying to whip up crowds and get them to breach the peace. But because it was said online, different rules are being applied, and this has become a police matter resulting in arrests. It is, of course, precisely what the Prime Minister has been saying will happen to people talking about disorder online. It means we are now less able to speak freely online than we are able to do in the street, which is more than a little odd. One quite sees that being online shouldn't make one less likely to be charged with an offence if one oversteps the mark, but what is happening is that we are now apparently more likely to be arrested for what is said on sites such as YouTube. I must therefore ask people commenting here to be a little more cautious than usual about what they say. It's bad enough having YouTube zealously deleting comments but we may now assume that the police will also be scrutinising channels like this, see if they can find an excuse to arrest somebody. It really is becoming an intolerable state of affairs. In case it seems that I'm exaggerating the danger, 
I also give a link in the description to this video to a statement by Peter Kyle, who is Secretary of State for Science, Innovation and Technology in our government. He says, and I quote, The violence we have witnessed in recent days is utterly deplorable. The internet cannot be a haven for those looking to sow division in our communities. Responsibility for harmful social media content principally rests with the individuals and groups who create it, but it is undeniable that social media has provided a platform for this hate. We have been clear with these companies that they also have a responsibility not to peddle the harm of those who seek to damage and divide our society, and we are working closely with them to ensure that they meet that responsibility. Police action is ongoing to ensure individual perpetrators are brought to justice, including where crimes have been committed online. Hmm. You see, I'm not at all sure that simply sowing division in our communities would be a crime if I did it outside. If I walked around the street and I said things that were sowing division, I wouldn't expect to be arrested for that. But apparently, the government does think one should be arrested for doing it on the internet, on the social media sites. Be very sure, this is part of a government push to suppress free speech on the internet by arresting people for saying things which would be perfectly legal if spoken out loud in a public place. The aim is to stop people from discussing stuff on the internet of which the government disapproves.